you know, and for that, I'm sent to death row. I'm not asking for justice. I was in shock. Since the beginning of time, societal norms make it seem like men are the toughest breed. But times are changing, and women are stepping into the spotlight, not just in our everyday lives, but also behind bars. In U.S. prisons, some women have earned quite a reputation for being formidable. Join us as we delve into the intriguing world of the 15 most feared women in the U.S. prisons and discover what makes them stand out in a realm where toughness knows no gender. Number 15. Patricia Blackman. Let's kickstart this episode with the troubling story of Patricia Blackman, a name that has become synonymous with fear within the walls of United States prisons. It all began on May 29, 1999, when Patricia called 911, desperately summoning paramedics to her mobile home in Dothan. On the other end of the line, Patricia told the operator that her child, Dominiqua, was not breathing. The paramedics rushed to the scene, arriving around 9.30 p.m. What they encountered was a scene straight from a nightmare. Dominiqua, just a child, lay on the floor of the master bedroom, clad only in a diaper and blood-soaked socks. Vomit covered her tiny body, and she showed no signs of breathing. There was a brutal hematoma on her forehead, and her chest was stained with blood. Paramedics, doing all they could, fought to revive the life of this defenseless child. Dominica was rushed to Flowers Hospital emergency room, but tragically, despite their efforts, she was pronounced dead at 10.22 p.m. The horror didn't stop there. When Dominica's pediatrician, Robert Head, and Dr. Matthew Krista, who treated her in the emergency room, examined her, they were met with a grim sight. Multiple bruises, contusions, and an imprint of a shoe on her chest were clear signs of physical abuse. They also noted marks from previous injuries on her fragile body. This heart-wrenching tale took a legal turn when Patricia Blackman was sentenced to death by a Houston County judge. She had gone from being a mother to a convicted perpetrator of unimaginable harm to her child. Within the walls of U.S. prisons, Patricia's name became synonymous with fear. Her actions, the brutal abuse that led to the tragic death of her child, earned her a reputation as one of the most feared women behind bars. Now this next woman will shock you. Number 14. Emma Coronel Aspiro. In the heart of the United States' sprawling prison system, there exists a woman whose name sends shivers down the spines of inmates and guards alike. Her name. Emma Coronel Aspuro. You might remember her as the beauty queen married to the infamous Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, one of the most notorious drug lords in history. But don't let her stunning looks fool you. Beneath that exterior lies a tale of intrigue, power, and the potential for fear. It all began in February 2014 when the world watched in shock as Joaquin Guzman, known as El Chapo, was captured by Mexican authorities. El Chapo was no ordinary criminal. He was the head of the Sinaloa Cartel, one of the most powerful drug trafficking organizations in the world. And by his side, through thick and thin, was Emma Coronel Aspuro. The fear factor here isn't just about her husband's crimes, though. It's about her alleged role in his operations and the daring escape that captivated the world. In 2015, El Chapo made a Houdini-like exit from a Mexican prison through a tunnel that led right into his cell. It was a jaw-dropping, audacious escape, and rumors swirled that Emma might have had a hand in orchestrating it. But this is it. In 2019, Emma Coronel was arrested at Dulles International Airport in Virginia, accused of aiding and abetting her husband's escape and his drug trafficking empire. The charges were severe, and the numbers involved were staggering. The Sinaloa cartel was responsible for smuggling billions of dollars worth of narcotics into the United States, and the U.S. authorities were determined to hold those involved accountable. As Emma awaited her trial behind bars, the media couldn't get enough of her. Her glamorous image clashed starkly with the harsh reality of prison life, creating a captivating narrative. The fear surrounding her wasn't just about her alleged involvement in criminal activities, but also about the mystery that surrounded her life as the wife of El Chapo. In the calm confines of the prison walls, rumors swirled. Did she possess secret knowledge that could shake the foundations of the drug trade? 
Could her connections, both within and beyond the prison, be a source of fear for those who crossed her path? Emma Cornell Aspuro symbolized intrigue and power within the United States prison system. Number 13. Antoinette Frank In early 1993, Antoinette Frank applied to join the New Orleans Police Department, or the NOPD. During her application process, there were some serious red flags. Senior officers discovered she lied on parts of her application and even failed two psychiatric evaluations. A psychiatrist named Philip Scuria examined her and strongly recommended against hiring her, describing her as shallow and superficial. Now you might wonder why they still hired her despite all these warnings. Well, it was a tough time for New Orleans in the early 90s. The city faced a big problem with crime, especially murders and drugs. The NOPD needed recruits to tackle this wave of crime. Plus, they also wanted to increase the number of African-American officers to ease racial tensions. So, even with all the red flags, the NOPD decided to bring Antoinette Frank on board as an officer. It was a decision that would later become a haunting part of her story, as her career took a dark turn that no one could have predicted. Antoinette Frank's journey into the New Orleans Police Department, despite those early warnings, was the start of a chilling descent into a threat the city could never have anticipated. Then, in 1995, she introduced herself to the world of crime, and of course, this ominous chapter unfolded at the Kim An restaurant. Frank, alongside her nefarious friend, Rogers Lacaz, embarked on a robbery that would leave an indelible mark on the city. It was a quiet night in New Orleans in 1995, and the Kim An restaurant was getting ready to close up. The owners, siblings Kwang Vu and Ha Vu, were tidying things up, prepared to call it a day. Little did they know, trouble was about to walk through the door. Then Frank strolled into the restaurant that night in her uniform, even though she was off duty. She wasn't alone. Frank and Lacaz even ordered something to eat, lulling the restaurant owners into a false sense of security. But in a horrifying turn of events, they embarked on their mission to rob. In the process, Frank fired two shots. A nearby police officer, Ronald Williams, who was on duty that night, heard gunshots around the restaurant. As he went in, he found the lifeless bodies of Kwang Vu and Ha Vu. To cover up her tracks, Frank shot Ronald, adding to the scores of bodies she dropped that night. Frank was arrested not only for the restaurant shooting, but also for her father's skull, which was found under her apartment with a bullet hole. Eventually, she was placed on death row. Number 12. Celeste Simeon Carrington Within the grim confines of the United States prisons, Celeste Carrington's name stands out as a chilling figure. She is notorious for the darkness she brought into the lives of others, and her crimes are the stuff of nightmares. Her dark journey began in the late 20th century, when she was sentenced to death for the murders of a Hispanic man in San Carlos and a Hispanic woman in Palo Alto. A third victim survived, testifying against Carrington and sealing her fate. Carrington claimed that she was forced into these heinous acts by her lover, driven by a desperate need for money. During her days, she was one of only 15 women who faced the death penalty among hundreds of condemned prisoners in California, a stark testament to the gravity of her crimes. Her appeals met a relentless justice system, which unanimously rejected arguments that police had unlawfully searched her apartment. Even though another request argued her trial defense was incompetent, Carrington's presence in the prison system remained a chilling reality. For something like this to have happened, there must be a backstory, right? Exactly. Carrington's backstory revealed a life marked by poverty and abuse, including a harrowing incident where her father impregnated her at the tender age of 14. However, she managed to rise above her difficult circumstances. She went into and excelled in track and field, and also competed internationally in the shot put. Before the murders, Carrington had no criminal record. However, she had been fired from her janitorial job for stealing checks. Witnesses during her trial shed light on her motive, explaining that she had been financially supporting her partner and her partner's three children. This explained why she involved herself in such an act, and now she lives to suffer the consequences. Number 11. Krista Pike the story of Krista Pike is a tapestry woven with threads of rebellion, passion, and ultimately, tragedy. 
Born on March 10, 1976 in West Virginia, Pike seemed destined for a life that defied conventions from the start. As a teenager, Pike was drawn into the dark underbelly of a cult-like group known as the Trenchcoat Mafia. It was within this enigmatic circle that she met her unfortunate lover, Tad Errol Ship. Their love, fierce and unconventional, would ultimately lead to a gruesome act that would shock the nation. In 1995, Pike and Ship, along with a fellow group member, brutally murdered 19-year-old Colleen Slemmer. What was meant to be a dreadful act of defiance became a chilling testament to the depths of human depravity. Pike's role in the murder was shocking, not only for its brutality, but for the cold-blooded nature of her actions. The trial that followed was a spectacle that gripped the nation. Pike's demeanor in the courtroom was nothing short of chilling, as she displayed an unsettling lack of remorse for her heinous deeds. The media couldn't get enough of this enigmatic and diabolical young woman, and the public was left both horrified and fascinated by her story. Sentenced to death, Pike became the youngest woman on death row in the United States at the time. Her story is a stark reminder of the consequences of a life led astray by rebellion and dark influences. In the end, the tale of Krista Gale Pike leaves us with more questions than answers. What led a young woman down such a dark path? Was it the allure of rebellion, the intoxication of an unconventional love, or something deeper and more sinister? We may never truly know, but her story continues to be a haunting chapter in the book of true crimes, reminding us of the complexities of human nature and the darkness that lurks within us all. Number 10. Cynthia Kaufman Once upon a time in the sun-soaked landscapes of California, a chilling series of events captured the nation's attention. Our tale begins with Cynthia Lynn Kaufman, a name that became synonymous with darkness and crime. In the 1980s, Cynthia Kaufman found herself amid a horrifying chapter of criminal history. It all began with her involvement in a string of murders that sent shockwaves through San Bernardino County. Her partner in crime and boyfriend was James Gregory Marlowe. Together, they embarked on a path of brutality that would haunt the community for a very long time. Their victims were four women, Linnell Murray, Donelda Donner, Gillette Mills, and Helen Ruth Hill. The crimes they committed were heinous, involving not only murder but also degrees of assault. It was a time of fear and despair as these crimes remained unsolved, casting a dark shadow over the region. As the story unfolded, Kaufman and Marlowe were eventually apprehended, and justice began to take its course. The media and the public alike closely watched the legal proceedings that followed. The question of guilt and the consequences of their actions became the focal point of this gripping narrative. Cynthia Kaufman's conviction and subsequent death sentence raised significant questions about the justice system, sparking debates on the ethics of capital punishment. Some believed that such a punishment was fitting for the gravity of the crimes committed, while others voiced concerns about the fairness of the process. In the end, Cynthia Lynn Kaufman's name became a part of a larger conversation surrounding crime, punishment, and the pursuit of justice. Her story reminds us of the darkness lurking within the human heart and the enduring quest for answers and resolution in the face of tragedy. Number 9. Carrie Lynn Dalton Often we have seen that no matter how much effort some people put into being obedient, it just doesn't work. And if we're to start mentioning names, Carrie Lynn Dalton should come first. Her life was a roller coaster of events that unfolded in crime and justice. Born on January 24, 1959, she ventured down a path that eventually landed her in a tangled web of legal troubles. Early on, Dalton found herself drawn into a world marked by addiction and criminal activity. Her life turned dark, with brushes with the law becoming more frequent. It was during these tumultuous years that she became embroiled in a crime that would define her story. At the age of 36 years, Carrie Lynn Dalton was convicted of participating in a violent robbery at a hotel in Reno, Nevada. The theft resulted in the tragic death of a man named Gregory Hoffman. This unfortunate event casted a long shadow over Dalton's life. The legal proceedings that followed were nothing short of intense. Carrie Lynn Dalton was found guilty of her involvement in the robbery and was subsequently sentenced to multiple life terms in prison. Her sentencing marked the end of one chapter in her tumultuous life, but the beginning of another. Since her sentencing, 
She has been incarcerated at the Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California, awaiting her execution and appealing her death sentence. Dalton's case stirred up discussions about the justice system and the consequences of her actions. Some believed her punishment was just, given the severity of the crime and its tragic outcome. Others questioned whether her involvement warranted such a lengthy incarceration. Over the years, Carrie Lynn Dalton's story has served as a poignant reminder of the choices we make in life and the lasting repercussions they can have. Number 8. Robin Lee Rowe The circumstances surrounding the story of Robin Lee Rowe are both tragic and perplexing. In 1992, on a chilling February day, a fire engulfed the apartment in southwest Boise, where her estranged husband Randy and their two innocent children, Joshua and Tabitha, resided. This incident would ultimately lead to her conviction and placement on death row. It all started with the flames that tore through the first floor of that fateful apartment. When the brave firefighters arrived, they discovered a haunting sight. Three lifeless bodies, victims of carbon monoxide poisoning, lay before them. Randy, just 34 years old, and their young children, Joshua, a mere 10 years old, and Tabitha, only 8, had met a tragic end. This situation has left many to wonder and, of course, became a puzzle that has baffled many who witnessed the incident. Robin Lee Rowe's role in this tragedy landed her on death row. The tangled web of her personal life, including her separation from Randy, added complexity to an already heart-wrenching story. The legal system, in its pursuit of justice, found her responsible for the deaths of her husband and children. This case is a grim reminder of the mysteries that can hide beneath seemingly ordinary events. It's a narrative that evokes strong emotions and invites contemplation on the nature of human actions and their consequences. Ultimately, the story of Robin Lee Rowe and the Boise apartment fire is a testament to the intricate and often enigmatic aspects of life, love, and loss. It's a narrative that continues to captivate, intrigue, and haunt those who delve into its depths. Number 7. Ana Marie Hernandez Nicknamed La Muneca because of her Barbie doll looks and reputed luxurious lifestyle, Ana Marie Hernandez is the name that will always remain on the lips of United States prison guards. She is better recognized as the wife of Daniel Ledesma, an ex-customs and border protection officer imprisoned for a drug and bribery case. On June 21, 2010, Ana Marie Hernandez, a 41-year-old legal resident in the U.S., admitted to two serious charges. First, she confessed to helping people, including her husband, sneak large amounts of cocaine into the U.S. without being checked at the Paso del Norte port of entry. This happened between June and October of 2005. In return for this illegal activity, Hernandez and her husband received more than $100,000. However, instead of facing the consequences, Ana didn't attend her sentencing on January 24, 2011, which led to an arrest warrant being issued for her. She was eventually caught. As of now, Anna remains in federal custody and is looking at a possible punishment of at least 10 years to life in federal prison for her involvement in drug trafficking. Additionally, she could face up to 10 years in federal prison for the bribery charge. Anna Marie Hernandez smuggled a large amount of illegal stuff into the U.S. She admitted to this crime but then didn't show up for her punishment, which led to her arrest. She's currently in federal custody and could spend a long time in prison for her actions. Although Anna Marie Hernandez already seems like one of the most feared female prisoners in the U.S., this next prisoner is another breed entirely. Number 6. Tiffany Cole Back in 2005, a couple named Carol and Reggie Sumner, both 61 years old, moved to Jacksonville, Florida. They had sold a car to a woman named Tiffany Cole, who agreed to make monthly payments for it, because they were good friends. In June that year, Tiffany Cole and her boyfriend, Michael James Jackson, came to Jacksonville to finish the car's paperwork. They even stayed at the Sumner's home. But something sinister was brewing in Michael Jackson's mind. He planned to rob the Sumner's and steal their money from their bank accounts. In July, Tiffany Cole, Michael Jackson, and two other men, Alan Wade and Bruce Nixon, went to the Sumner's house. Wade and Nixon pretended to need to use the phone, but they had duct tape and a fake gun. Once inside, they tied up, silenced, and blindfolded the Sumners with duct tape. 
Wade and Nixon searched the house for any financial documents they could find. They even called Jackson to help find ATM information. But he couldn't figure it out. Then, they locked the Sumners in the trunk of their car, taking the keys and stealing their valuables. The group drove the Sumners to a remote area in Georgia, where they had dug a grave in advance. Wade and Nixon took the Sumners into the woods while Cole stayed behind in the car to keep watch. Although there isn't direct evidence of exactly what happened next, it's known that the Sumners were put in the grave while still alive, and the tomb was filled in. The group then fled the scene, leaving the Sumners to their fate. The police tracked them to a hotel in South Carolina and arrested them. Wade and Jackson were sentenced to death, but Nixon, who cooperated with the police and led them to the bodies, received a 45-year sentence for second-degree murder. In 2022, there were some changes in their sentences. Wade's death sentence was reduced to life in prison with no chance of parole, while Jackson and Cole had their death sentences reinstated. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. In the shadowy realm of incarceration, there's an unforgettable figure, a female prisoner who defies the norms. Forget the prison uniform for a moment because what truly sets her apart are the chains that cling to her wrists and encircle her neck, an unmistakable symbol of caution. But here's the twist. She wears a smile, a cryptic expression that seems impervious to her dire situation. How, in the face of such confinement, can someone smile so boldly? It's a riddle that leaves us with more questions than answers. As we studied this photograph, we couldn't help but wonder about the woman behind that inscrutable grin. Is she a psychopath, or does a more profound medical condition obscure her emotions? What monstrous act had led her to these extraordinary restraints? Now it's your turn to unravel this mystery with your thoughts. What do you make of this perplexing image? Please share your insights in the comments below, for it is in our collective curiosity that we may unlock the secrets hidden within this enigmatic prisoner's smile. Number 5. Darlie Lynn Peck Routier In the early hours of June 6, 1996, a frantic call reached the Rowlett, Texas 911 dispatchers. It was from Darlie Routier, a 26-year-old mother of three. She claimed that an intruder had broken into her home and harmed her and her two sons, Devin and Damon. Thankfully, her baby, Drake, and her husband, Darren, were unharmed upstairs. Tragically, when the police arrived, they found that Devin had already lost his life. Damon fought for his life, but didn't make it to the hospital. Darley had been hurt, with bruises and cuts on her throat and right arm. She was rushed to the hospital for treatment. Despite her injuries, Darley gave a detailed description of the intruder. She said he was a tall white man, around six feet tall. The investigation uncovered a clue. A cut window screen in the garage suggesting how the intruder might have entered the home. As time passed, gaps started showing up in Darley Routier's story about an intruder. Something strange happened when a video became famous. It showed her laughing, chewing gum with friends, and even spraying silly string around her son's graves. It was odd because she had lost her two sons just a week before. People began to wonder if Darley Routier had harmed her children. Her upbeat behavior didn't match the sadness one would expect from a mother who had just lost her kids. Only four days after the video came out, Routier was arrested and accused of planning her son's murders. It led to her being found guilty of first-degree murder for Damon on February 4, 1997, and she was sent to death row. Now, Darley Routier remains in the Mountain View Unit Prison in Gatesville, Texas, waiting for her execution. But she still says she didn't do it, that she's innocent. Number 4. Kimberly Cargill Cherry, a woman in her late 30s, was trying her best to live more independently, even though her mental abilities were similar to a 9-year-old's. She had a small apartment, handled her banking and chores, and even took on babysitting duties for Kimberly Cargill. Oddly, despite Cherry's limitations, she provided better care to Cargill's four-year-old son than his mother. Cargill's other children later revealed a troubling truth. They often suffered from their mother's mistreatment. They told the court that Cargill would frequently hurt them, choking, kicking, and hitting them. Their lives were filled with fear. Now, going back to Cherry, she faced her struggles. She missed important doctor and dentist appointments because Cargill was frequently late picking up her son. 
Cherry was an innocent and straightforward person. But that honesty got her into trouble when Kimberly Cargill, fearing Cherry's testimony in a child custody hearing, decided to hide her. The horrifying twist? Cherry met a tragic end. Her autopsy didn't provide clear answers, but signs suggested a struggle for breath, like small bleeds in her eyes. However, Cargill, in a panic, claimed Cherry had a seizure. But here's the unsettling part. Cargill, a registered nurse, acted in a way that's far from what a nurse should do. She didn't seek help. Instead, she set Cherry's body ablaze on the side of the road. As shocking as it sounds, Cargill's actions didn't escape justice. A jury found her guilty of capital murder, and she was sentenced to death by lethal injection and has been on death row since now at 57 years old. Kimberly's story is unsettling, but we have more frightening ones for you. Number 3. Maria Del Rocio Alfaro On June 15, 1990, in Anaheim, California, a young girl named Autumn Wallace, just nine years old, was alone at home. She was waiting for her mom and older sister to return from work. Now, here's where it gets troubling. Maria knew the Wallace family well and was friends with one of Autumn's older sisters. Mary had something else in mind when she visited that day. She knew the family wasn't home and saw this as an opportunity to steal things from their house to sell for money. Now, when Mary arrived, Autumn, being a friendly and trusting child, opened the door for her. She considered Alfaro her sister's friend, not suspecting her hidden intentions. Maria grabbed a knife from the kitchen and said she needed to use the bathroom, which was at the back of the house. In a horrifying turn of events, Maria lured young Autumn into the toilet under pretenses only to commit a gruesome act. She stabbed the innocent girl 57 times. Her motive? She wanted to steal things from the house to get money for drugs. Maria took items like jewelry worth less than $300. When Maria was arrested, she initially claimed that drugs influenced her actions. But the problem was, no one could confirm this because Maria wasn't drug tested within the critical 36 to 48 hours after the incident. Later, she changed her story, saying an unknown man forced her, but this man wasn't found. Ultimately, the California Supreme Court convicted Mary of first-degree murder with exceptional circumstances. Number 2. Linda Carty Linda Carty, a British citizen, found herself in a severe legal tangle in the United States, Back in 2002, she was guilty of being part of a terrible crime, the kidnapping and murder of a young mother named Joanna Rodriguez in Texas. The accusation was that Cardi had planned to take Rodriguez's baby for herself. However, what makes this story complex is the controversy surrounding Cardi's trial. Her defense team argued that she didn't get a fair trial and that substantial evidence in her favor was left out. Despite these claims, she was sentenced to death. Since then, Cardi's case has gained international attention, with many people expressing concerns about whether her legal representation was good enough and whether the testimonies used against her were reliable. Some of the witnesses who spoke against her later changed their statements. Cardi's case is still being debated and appealed in the legal system. Some groups and individuals want her conviction and sentence reviewed, while others believe she had a fair trial. It's a complex legal situation that continues to unfold. Number 1. Brittany Holberg Back in 1996, when Brittany was 25 years old, she found herself in a troubling situation. She met an elderly man in his 80s named Towery after leaving a grocery store in Amarillo. What happened next is a disturbing tale. Brittany stalked Towery and located his apartment. Then Brittany went to Towery's house and asked for a phone. Meanwhile, she had other plans. Towery asked her to enter since she pretended like she needed help. Once inside his apartment, Brittany demanded money. When he refused, things took a dark turn. Brittany used a hammer to hit Towery and then stabbed him multiple times with various knives and forks she found in his kitchen. Afterward, she went with his money and other valuables. This took another turn in court. Brittany's defense argued that she acted in self-defense, claiming Towery attacked her first. However, the court didn't buy this explanation. Brittany was incarcerated for the rest of her life. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.